it's a 24-hour job. So it's very easy to get like completely hooked up with that. And then you're not recovering anymore. I think it's very important to time training and recovery right. So it's not person who trains the most, but who trains the smartest, the hardest and has the best recovery. Yeah, the training is not over when it's over, but it's over when your career is over. <laughs> I think I'm pretty comfortable outside the comfort zone. I'm really used to like self-inflicted pain. The races you really remember the most are the ones where you have to push the first. If you're not able to enjoy the suffering and the pain and see it as something actually good, you have no chance to win any race still the rewarding feeling of giving it all and maybe coming away with the win. Even the professionals are sometimes completely different when it comes to recovery and so on. So just like tell somebody, okay, you need to train for three days, then you have one day rest and then you train three days again and one day rest. It's just wrong because everybody reacts different. And therefore, you just need ways to measure data of recovery, speed, everything, the impact of training. And without data, you can't do that. That's pretty simple. The most challenging thing for me, uh, it's just injury prevention. Yeah, how I managed to stay uh, fit so that I could do the training that's necessary to be able to still perform at that level. And therefore, it's just very important to time recovery and workload perfectly. I think with the data that is available now, also much easier to prevent injuries and just like training overload. And also working together with my coach. So it's very important for him to be able to analyze training sessions from far away. Yeah, that's an important piece of the whole puzzle. Of course, the feeling is still the most important thing. And often recovery is not about just the body, but also the mental state, especially after Ironman Hawaii or, or any long course race. So therefore I still have to rely on that, but the feeling is always really strongly linked to the workload you have done. When you feel good and uh, when you feel happy, it's the best recovery. Trying to make your surrounding as comfortable and nice as possible is probably the most important thing. Willpower, a strong word loaded with potential. Willpower gets us up and about. It takes us running in the rain and makes us do an extra 20 or 30. It enables us to exceed our limits. It pushes us to continue when the lights are about to go out. Keeps us going when it already hurts and our body wants to quit. But willpower can be deceptive. It can make us do things the wrong way, the hard way. It can make us push when we should pull, make us go harder when we should slow down. We all need guidance to get things right, to become our true potential.
travels at 200 miles per hour. Sometimes the boldest move is to stop. Instinct only gets you so far. To keep progressing takes knowledge. Knowing how hard you've pushed, how your body adapts and how well you recover. This is where the real work happens. It takes time getting under your own skin. No one can do it for you and no one can see how far you've gone. But now I can. The numbers speak for themselves. Getting quicker, getting stronger, getting smarter. When you're committed to the journey, knowledge is progress. Introducing 